<clears throat> okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now on question number five from this January 2024 Pure Mathematics P1 International A Level at Excel um, exam. And this question here is about straight line graphs, coordinate geometry. And we are given a diagram with these two lines, L1 and L2. And it says um, the straight line L1, shown in figure one, passes through the points P. I've got the copy of the diagram here, so we don't have to keep scrolling up and down. Passes through the points P, minus 2, 9. And Q, 10, 6. Okay, so those are points that are given. Find the equation of line 1, giving your answer in the form y equals mx plus c, where m and c are constants to be found. Three marks. Now, this is a type of question, which is basically an IGCSE question, uh, where you have to find the equation of a line passing through two points. So, to find the equation of a straight line, we need two bits of information. One of the things we need is any point that the, that the line passes through. And we can choose either of these two points. So, for example, let's say we choose point Q, which is 10, 6, just to avoid the negative signs. That's fine. No problem. We can do that. Um, what happened there? Sorry. This. Okay, 10 and 6. And the second thing we need is the gradient of the line. So we need the gradient of line 1, which is given by the formula, as we know, for, for gradients is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 or however, however you want to write it but basically you choose two points that are on the line and you find the change in the y which is like the rise over the change in the x so for example if we start with q we have 6 minus 9 over 10 minus minus 2 if we start with q for the y we must start with q for the x and remember it's the change in y over the change in x okay a lot of people make the mistake of working them the wrong way around okay so that's going to give you negative 3 over 10 plus 2 which is 12 which is negative a quarter and we can see the diagram kind of uh, justifies that our answer is a negative gradient and is quite shallow so it looks like we, we did the right thing if we came up with a positive gradient then the diagram would kind of give us an idea that we've done something wrong because the gradient um, if it was positive, it would be going like this, and we can see that the great, you know, it's going like this, so there's something wrong with our answer then. Um, and another thing is, we could have also done it the other way around. We could have done min 9 minus 6 over minus 2 minus 10, and that would give us also negative a quarter. It's just the same as that. That's negative 3 over 12 is negative a quarter, and 3 over negative 12 is also negative a quarter. So it doesn't matter which way you go, as long as you're consistent. If you start with Q for the Y, change in Y, you must start with Q for the change in X as well. All right, so that's a gradient of line 1. Um, so now we have enough information to find the equation of line 1. Now there's um, one method that students use, Y equals MX plus C. I'll use that for now. Because we have to give our answer in this form, it might be a bit easy to use this method. But we have y equals mx plus c, and we have the point, we have this is the point, this is like the x and y coordinate, and this is the gradient minus a quarter. So we can say y, which is 6, is equal to m, which is minus a quarter, times x, which is 10, plus c. So we end up with um, 6 equals minus, if you cancel, that's 5 over 2, plus c. So c is going to be 6 plus 5 over 2. Okay, 6 plus 5 over 2, add, add 5 over 2 of both sides. That's like 12 over 2 plus 5 over 2, which is 17 over 2. Okay, so that's 12 over 2 plus 5 over 2, 17 over 2. So we can say y is equal to the gradient, which we said is minus a quarter, x plus 17 over 2. And just to show that the other method that I'm going to show you, which I personally prefer for most types of questions, especially when it comes to you know further type of questions like in p3 and so on um, is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 here your y and your x stay as they are but the x1 and y1 are the points that you you've chosen so you have y minus y1 so y minus um, 6 equals m which is minus a quarter times x minus x1 which is 10 now because we want to express it in this form where y is the subject i'm going to multiply through by the minus a quarter. If it was asked to express in the form ax plus by plus c equals zero, where a, b, and c are integers, then I would multiply by four to get rid of the fraction. But because we want it in this form, I'm going to multiply by negative a quarter, expand the bracket, so minus a quarter x plus, and that's 10 over two, which is five, or 10 over four, which is five over two, 
Okay, minus and minus is plus. And then I've got to add 6 to both sides. So I have minus a quarter x plus 5 over 2 plus 12 over 2, which gives you, of course, the same answer. Minus a quarter x plus 17 over 2. And another thing, it doesn't matter which point we chose. If we had chosen the point P, which is minus 2, 9, we would get the same answer. Okay, so for example here, I'll just put it in a different color to, to show that it will give us the same answer. So if I had chosen the point minus 2, 9, so P minus 2, 9, let me just um, put that in the different color as well. We see we would have had here, instead of 6, we would have had 9 equals, it would still be minus a quarter of the gradient, but then x would be 2, and it would be plus c, so we'll have 9 is equal to, and that's minus a quarter times 2, which is minus a half plus c, and then we'd have c equals 9 plus a half, which is, that's um, 9 plus a half, one second, what did I do wrong here? I think I forgot to put minus 2, didn't I? This is supposed to be a minus 2, my bad, okay? So that's going to be plus a half, all right? So it's going to be 9 minus a half, okay? 9 minus a half, sorry about that. I wrote the thing with the wrong sign. So that's a minus a half now. So that's 18 over 2 minus 1 over 2, which is 17 over 2. So we still get the same value for C. And similarly here, we would have had, we would have had Y minus 9 equals minus a quarter. So you'd have Y minus 9 minus a quarter times X minus minus 2 which would be plus 2 you have minus minus 2 would be plus 2 so you have y minus 9 equals minus a quarter x minus a half so then you have to add um, 9 to both sides you have y equals minus a quarter x minus a half plus and that would be 18 over 2 and minus a half plus 18 over 2 is 17 over 2 so you would get the same answer in the end in both cases all right so it doesn't matter which point you cho choose as long as there are points on the line you're trying to find the equation of um it's perfectly fine so just to show you that both work both of them work all right so that's part a done now for part b it says the straight line l2 which is also shown in the diagram passes through the origin and is perpendicular to line one so line one if we just uh put down the equation y equals minus a quarter x plus 17 over 2 okay um, so the straight line 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 2 passes through the origin and is perpendicular to line 1 the lines line 1 and line 2 meet at the point r as shown in figure 1 find the coordinates of r so to find the coordinates of r what we need to do is we need to find the equation of line 2 we need to find the equation of line 2 so for line 2 what we know is line 1 line 1 is perpendicular to line 2. So what we can say therefore is if you have two lines which are perpendicular that means they meet at right angles and the product of their gradients the gradient of line 1 times the gradient of line 2 is going to be equal to negative 1. The product of their gradients is negative 1. They are negative reciprocals of each other. So we can say that line 2 okay its gradient is going to be the negative reciprocal of line 1. So you take the gradient of line 1, and the gradient of line 1 is minus a quarter, and you change the sign and you flip it upside down. So it's going to give you 4 over 1, which is 4. So the gradient of line 2 is 4. And we know that line 2 passes through the origin. So we have a point that it passes through the origin. So it passes through 0, 0, and the gradient of line 2 is 4. Now we know that y equals mx plus c. Very easy to to write this one out it's just going to be y equals 4x because c is 0 okay the gradient is 4 the y intercept is 0 y equals 4x okay we know that the, the, the passes through the y-axis at the origin okay so there's there's the equation of line 2 so that's the equation of line 2 now how do we find where they intersect well what we do is we basically substitute one equation into the other okay many people they see it as uh, you know equating the two equations which in these cases it works but a better way to think about it, so it's more comprehensive how you're thinking, is you are substituting one equation into the other. That's how you solve any type of simultaneous equation for any type of uh, problem. So here, when you substitute one into the other, you can, for example, you can say 4x, replace this y with 4x. So I'm, I'm replacing the y with 4x, so 4x equals 
minus a quarter x plus 17 over 2. We want to solve this equation. That will give us the x coordinate of the point of intersection. Now, what I would like to do here is just get rid of the fraction right in the beginning. If I multiply both sides of the equation by 4, the denominators here will disappear because that's the LCM of the denominator. So I have 16x. Remember, every term has to be multiplied by 4. Equals minus x plus, and it will be 17 over 2 times 4, which is 17 times 2, which is 34. 17 over 2 times 4, they cancel out. 17 times 2 is 34. So you're left with this equation, and you can add x to both sides, so you get 17x equals 34. You can divide both sides by 30 by 17, sorry. And we know that 34 divided by 17 is 2. So the x coordinate is 2, so the y coordinate is 4 times 2, which is 8. So we can say the coordinates of the point R, is it called R? Yes, are 2 and 8. So there we have the answer to part B of this question. Okay, so we found the coordinates of the point at which they intersect. All right, so there's the answer to that one. And now I think we're going to go on to part C. Okay, so for part C, it says find the exact area of triangle OPQ. OPQ. So I'm just going to make um, some lines to show that particular triangle. So I'll just use a different color here. So O P Q. So we've got to find the area of this triangle. Okay. Now this triangle, um, to find the area of a triangle, the, pro the simplest way would be, I think here, is to use the fact that this is a perpendicular line to that, which means that this OR is like the vertical height of the triangle, and PQ is like the base of the triangle. So we can think of this as a triangle where we know the vertical height and we know the base. So we can say, say that PQ is the base, and this is the height, and the area of a triangle is a half times the vertical height. Okay, that's like the vertical height, the distance between the vertex to the base at right angles. Okay, so we can use that in order to find the area of this triangle. So we need two things here. Therefore, we know that the base, as I said, is the, the magnitude of the line from P to Q. And we know the height of the triangle here is the magnitude between O and R. The magnitude of the, the line between O and R. Okay, so that's what we have to focus on now to answer the question. So for P to Q, we can use the length formula. The length formula is basically the square root of the change in the x coordinates squared plus the change in the y coordinates squared, square root. It's Pythagoras' theorem basically. So I want to find the distance between P and Q. I find the change in the x coordinates will give me this length and the change in the y coordinates will give me that length and then I use Pythagoras on it basically that's what this is that's what this formula is from so you have the square root of and you have from P to Q now we've got the, the coordinates here I'll just write the minus 2 and 9 and Q was 10 6 okay and R was 2 8 right okay so we got the change in the X coordinate which is you can say minus 2 minus 10 squared plus the change in the Y coordinates which is 9 minus 6 squared so that's going to give me the square root of that's going to be minus 12 squared, which is 144, plus 3 squared, which is 9. Remember, the minus sign doesn't matter. When you squared it, it's going to become positive anyway for the minus 12. Um, so you end up with 153. So root of 153, right? So that's the square root of 153. Let me just make sure of that in case I've done something silly. So you have the square root of minus 2 minus minus 2 minus 10 squared plus 9 minus 6 squared. That gives me 3 root 17. Okay, which is, I think, the same as this. Square root of 153. Yeah, okay, so that gives you 3 root 17 in its simplified third form. And we have to give the exact area, so we're not going to put any decimals here. So that gives you 3 root 17. Okay, so there's the answer to, that's that's the base of the triangle. Now we need to find the, the height of the triangle. So we've got this, the distance between O and R. 
Well, that's pretty easy because it's just going to be 2 minus 0 squared plus 8 minus 0 squared. Okay, so it's going to be the square root of 4 plus, 4 plus 32, which is the square root of 36, which is 6, right? So you've got the square root of 2 squared plus 8 squared, which gives you, hold on, 4 plus 64, sorry, my bad. What am I doing? That was a mistake. I said a squared is 32. Why did I say that? I've got no idea. a squared is 64, sorry. So the square root of 68, okay? And the square root of 68 is going to be 4 times 17, which is 2 root 17. Okay, so that, that was, a, you've got to be careful about things like that. All right, so th there we have the, the length of OR. So we know that this, this the base is 3 root 17, and the height is 2 root 17. So the area is going to be a half times the base, which is 3 root 17, times the height, which is um, sorry, yeah, 2 root 17. So you end up with, that cancels with that 2. So you're left with 3 times 17. Because root 17 times root 17 is root 17, is 17, sorry. So you have 3 times 17, which is, that's going to be 30 plus 21, that's 51 square units. Okay, so there's the answer that half times the base times the height. Okay, that's 4 plus 64, 68. Good. 3 root 17, and you multiply them together, multiply by a half. So there's the answer to question number 5, part C. And that completes this um, question here on um, basic coordinate geometry. Most of this question is basically... IGCSE level really um, so it's, it's quite a simple one here that they gave you so kind of giveaway marks so um, other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that will be in this region of the paper at the end of the video other questions from the topic of coordinate geometry from P1 you can find in the playlist over here you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and the video at the top here will show you how to find the content in my um, YouTube channel easily and efficiently thank you for watching and see you soon